Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Shabana to bai bunera. Apna shabai ke abaro shakoto jana chia mis hak. We were talking about this book, special book I find Lashkar. So therefore, if you could talk about this book now, I mean, I, I'm really interested now. Apna keno lexin. Ah, khoto din lexi apna and the difficulties you faced. It started off when my mother once said uh, one of my father's ancestors worked on a steamship. Um, and they were called uh, uh, jahajis, jahaj me meaning um, uh, ship. Uh, so I did some research on that and I discovered that there were lots of Sileti men who actually uh, got employment on these British uh, steamships and uh, they travelled to Calcutta. That um, was meant Well over 100 years ago. 100 so years th these men actually date back to 300 years. Um, so they weren't slaves, they, they weren't forced to work, so a lot of people think um, they were, but they weren't. They sought employment and uh, they were employed by the British. Because what happened was merchant ships uh, were connected with the East India Company and they uh, travelled from England with um, English workers. And it used to take four months to travel from England to East India. So East India is now present day Bangladesh and Pakistan. Um, and uh, these men, they decided they didn't want to spend another four months travelling back to England because it was a horrific journey. It really was a very, very difficult journey. So this is where these men were employed, these Sileti men. Um, so they were obviously employed by bribery um, and they managed to get uh, jobs on, on, on these ships, but they stoked the engines, they put coals uh, in the engine, that sort of thing. They did these jobs where they didn't really see daylight, so they were in the deck of the ship, and they were actually these men were fueling the ship so the ships could. Uh, no, run. Information like the, you have to do lots of research. Yes, you can. Uh, internet, I mean, uh, I found the research quite difficult because there wasn't a lot of information about these Sileti men, you know, I looked at diaries, you know, some men actually wrote diaries, exactly what they experienced. Wow. So I had to sort of imagine this, um, sort of put a story together really, what they actually went through. And uh, many were brutally punished by the British. They, they were uh, beaten, they were forcibly fed pork as well on the ship. They were given just, you know, bath and dal, you know, it, that, that, that's, that's their staple food and they, they didn't have um, sometimes they were given rotten food, so they died. What's the number of those men? Uh, any idea? The number of these men? Um, I think uh, around about 1850, about 3,000 men were coming to England. Um, and when they did arrive here, they didn't go back. They settled here. So they jumped ship and then they decided to have a life in England. So what they did, they looked for jobs such as cleaning jobs. They became artists. They um, played uh, music in the streets. Um, dance just to make money so they could just buy food at the end of the day um, and then these men married English women uh, but they did jobs where other people wouldn't do like and there was the majority of them were getting married or just they the were majority of them yes that they did they married English women and because these English women ma married these men uh, they were seen as outcasts in their own society so these English women they weren't allowed to go back to their own families and they were wow. seen as um, you know, disgusting people because they married uh, foreigners. So they were, um, these men were called Asiatics, so that was the word that it, they were used. We used Asians today, but they were called Asiatics. And uh, uh, the cover actually tells a story of uh, the men working on a, on a ship. So, you know, th they, they fasted, you know, when it was Ramadan, and, and they, they carried out their traditions. So they didn't they have access everything. to halal food at all, I'm sure. No, anyway, no, they time, didn't. It's, it's I mean, you know, some uh, captains... Were they shikito? Were they shikito? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? I think what happened was, um, why do people find work? Because they want to be able to feed their family. They want a better life. Mm. And uh, they, in 1850, uh, East India suffered from famine. And uh, it was a very, very difficult time for these men. They had to go out and find work. And so I they think could feed it's, their it's family, amazing. So. Also, if you could, you know... Mm. Make a face in that way, so they'll hear. Oh yes, more okay. Better. Um, <laughs> okay. No, that's actually, fine. Actually, after that, this actually, our mother, you know, generation before generation, much into shikka like, what is it? Kichwa se kya na? Yeah. Ita ki Bangla ki shombo na ita khora. 
uh, well, asset, you you inshallah. I think if we took it to Bangladesh and got it uh, translated or, or something. I don't know. This information, <laughs> actually, Ibrahim, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm but th this is this is a story of one man's journey. So it, it's a fictional story. Wow. They can call story but I think it. There are some facts in it, definitely. Yes. Of course. So people will understand. This is what historical fiction is. It's based on history, but it's fiction for people to understand and for me to educate other people. That this is why I write. You never know. Yeah. Someone would make a movie from that. Yes. <laughs> like Harry Potter, would you think? Yeah, think <laughs> it would be nice dream, to, <laughs> but making <laughs> historical movies is no, very, no, very it's, expensive. It is fantastic, so. honestly. Mm -hmm. um, Ibrahim, um, I'm sure, man, you're very proud of your mother, man. I'm sure. You're also a writer yourself. You, you are writing blogs now for Huffington Post, right? Yes, that's right. So how did you get I can't involved? write like this, obviously. Yeah, so how did you get involved? Because one of my hero, you know, uh, Mehdi Hassan, Mehdi Hassan, right? He used to be in Huffington Post before he went to Al Jazeera. Yes, it's an amazing place to be. So tell me about yeah. how you were involved and what do you write about? Well, I, I was interested in writing for Huffington Post for a long time. So I have to, I must make it clear that I'm only a blogger, so I don't work for them. So I'm an independent contractor. So they give you this platform. They give anyone who wants to be a blogger a platform where as long as what they've written is good and it's unique and it meets their criteria, their guidelines, then they're happy to publish it. So, you know, alhamdulillah, I've been quite fortunate to have two of my blogs published and I was I only just recently became a blogger for them. So it was about uh, two months ago, back in October uh, 2016. So that was when I published my first blog to do with, um, you know, why am I using digital media to engage and empower the youth, particularly within, within the Bangladeshi community in Britain. So I wrote a piece about that um, to do with um, my uh, presenting experiences, uh, you know, particularly with what I did at LB24 as well. I used to present a, uh, a web series chat show called Youth Corner. So um, you know, I mean that was to do with um, my passion for wanting to bring um, untapped talent, you know, lesser known uh, talent within the British Bangladeshi community and bring them to the forefront. Wanting to hear their stories. Why do you feel we're struggling in, in going to the media, mainstream media, our young people, and um, we don't have many writers, even the bloggers, and you know, you know they're not helping themselves either. We're not uh, protecting ourselves, so we're not there to say our views. So, why do you think it's a struggle? Because you're a young man, I'm sure you have more clues than me. Why do they struggle? Um, uh, it's a good question. I mean, is it because they don't know who to approach, maybe they don't have those contacts perhaps and you know that's something that perhaps when I was starting this journey into media you know I didn't really know the contacts myself as well, I had to look um, for these contacts myself so that was m you know my own mission and then maybe because now we have all these new platforms that are out there you know there are um, you know there are places where people can go to now and I think that we didn't have that before. So is, it, is it easy to write blogs like um, if you don't if you don't university? I'm sure we wrote lots of lots of stuff. So it should have been easier for people who left universities at least to become a writers. Uh, it's it's a very or different it thing because it, it depends on the different. subject that you study. So I mean, I come from a computer science background. So you'll find that maybe people who do computer science they go into programming and other f fields in uh, in IT and computer science and. That's not necessarily the same as going into media and journalism. It's two completely, uh, you know, it's like two different peas in a pod. Um, can, can I come in here yeah, and say, um, you write what you know. If you don't know something, don't attempt to write it, basically. Mm, so because if you write what you know, you'll know exactly what to write. So you, you have to have that knowledge. So uh, I started to write for Huffington Post before he did, but um, in 2013. So I pitch, you have to pitch an article, basically, to them. Uh, so you, you have an article, you write it, and then you send it to the editors and they look at it. So if they say, yep, uh, we'll take that on and they'll publish it. How, so long, I, you I how long have you been with Huffington Post? Um, since 2013, but you write as and when. You know, you, okay, you know so there isn't a routine. You know, if there's a particular subject you want to write about, uh, something in the news, uh, uh, you can write about that. So my first article was about Laskars. So I wrote about their history and then I wrote about uh, Remembrance Day where uh, Sileti men who actually fought in the war, because a lot of people don't know that these men actually contributed to the war. So I wrote uh, uh, that to tie in with the Remembrance Day. And then recently I wrote about how uh, highly educated British Bangladeshi women are finding it difficult to get into employment because of discrimination. So um, I just feel because it's my angle and I can sort of relate to that. What's the response um, from people when you write on this kind of stuff? Um, 
it's been out on Twitter, so I think that's the biggest readership that I've had. Cause I, I, I um, actively promote it on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, so people just retweet, but um, I think uh, you can actually see how many times it's been retweeted and who's actually reading it. And I think because I'm writing more articles and I'm being recognised more, uh, my readership is expanding. And that's how it, it, it starts off. I think the first article is very difficult um, to even get the editors to say yes, because they're not going to choose anything. You know, you really have to know your stuff and uh, make sure it's a very good written article. And then if they take you on, um, you carry on writing for them, but they have to approve every article. So they might say, no, this isn't good. You need to work this. Um, I'm just I'm that, that's well, how it is. Yeah. So I was going to say, because that's the same problem I had where I wanted to write many years ago as well. But because when I saw my mum write something, I thought, oh, you know, this looks like, you know, this is something I feel I could do as well because I have other interests like football and other things like that. Yeah, you're so lucky you've got somebody there to, you know, kite things. But then you. having said that, you know, my mum was saying, no, you've got to know, write about what you know. And so yeah. she, so it wasn't that easy even to ask my mum and say, you know, I'll just write about this, this will be fine, you know. You, you, so that's why it took so long for me to write yeah. something. But then once I had done all these other things in media, then I suddenly thought, okay, maybe I can put something together here. So, as Mum mentioned, it was to do with um, putting something together where you know you've got that story and you've got to write it in a way that is quite unique and write it in a certain style that can attract the editor and, and can actually get people to read. I think once you've got that style and you've got this way of how you want to write something, then you've got a good chance. Of Especially now, I mean, we are uh, facing a big, big challenge from media. Like you know, every day almost you you open you know local paper, you'll have. Muslim extremists, Muslim terrorists, Muslims are getting there, da, 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 da. everywhere. We are complaining. Yeah, some of them are, uh, st they shouldn't say in that level or the word they use, quite, you know, disturbing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's affecting our young people. You know, it's almost like they don't have identity. Uh, we keep complaining, oh, why don't we answer something back? Or why don't we say the truth? We know there are some truth in it. We're not saying they're all lies. No, no, there are some truth in it. And But we're not. All of us, no extremists and terrorists and all that. Like, there are certain, you know, minimum few people probably doing for their own politics and blah, blah, blah. Something like that. We don't even know them, who they are. So in that time, I'm not sure if I'm going complain about them. But you can reach millions of people through writing and explain the issues. That's the best way to talk to people in that level, exactly. right? Exactly. And I think, it's, uh, as you said, it's educating people. And that is the only way you're getting your voice heard. And that's very important in a positive way. Uh, not in a negative way because we've got negative written all o over you know us Muslims and I think we need to uh, show it in a positive light. And we have to and be fair. We have to be, be honest be, yes. and fair because yes. it doesn't matter what they write, it's their issue. Yes, we can't be on As the Muslims, attack all the time. That's, you know. that's what I mean, we yeah. can't be doing that. Yes. That's not the case. I think um, recently there was a um, I was talking to one of my guests the other day. He said, we have 45 uh, young brothers and sisters in Oxford and Cambridge University. 45, it's a mashallah, big number for our, it's a very proud time for our Bangladeshi Muslims. So if you have big number like that, I mean, we don't see many people are writing actually. So amra kita khura lagbo, ya thara re afna re ekta, afna de rong kham khura afna. You know, mashallah, a lot of things are looking good. So kita khura lagbo, ya thara re afna re ekta, afna re ekta, what do you think we should do? I think for someone to become a writer, they have to have it in themselves to want to be able to write. You can't get someone to become a writer, say, right, you, you, you can okay. become a, a writer. If they're interested in an issue and they might decide, hey, I want to write about this, that's how it starts. Have but you they met need anyone like sh uh, you thought mm. she's a good writer or he, and then when they met you, oh, I could do it, you're doing it, I could do it. Have you met anybody like that? Uh, yes, I think I have to mention it was um, Rabina Khan, who's the uh, councillor for Shadwell and I first uh, met her in 2004 when I was first starting out uh, writing and she published her first book and she was the only uh, Bangladeshi woman who, who was actually published at the time and and uh, I got a lot of influence from her and uh, um, I learnt a lot from her and because I, I made that connection with her I think she's been an absolute role model for me um, and that's how we became good friends and I think it's uh, she's advised me in, in, in many many different ways but we need more people like that we need more writers because the publishing industry is very underrepresented with Bangladeshi writers and 
yeah, it's not an easy field to get in. It really, really is hard because you have to take years to actually, you know, tone your writing, you know, get it right. And it, it's about learning. You have to learn a craft. And people just think, well, when you just you just write a book and but just I put you have together. access to a lot of young mm. um, and uh, you know. I'm sure a lot of women and brothers and sisters, young people, coming to you, taking your books, buying yeah. your books. Yeah. So when you can you do you encourage them to do this? Yeah, I do. Okay, I I'm do. just going to yes. go to. There's a caller here. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Hello. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, salam. Wa alaikum salam, brother. Your name? Who is calling? Who is calling? Who is calling? I'm calling from uh, Tahamlet. Uh, Shuhel, okay. Shuhel, are you here? <laughs> Sister Tundi Ibrahim, I know who you are yeah. now. Yes, but yeah, go ahead. Am I live right now on the show? You are, you are, <laughs> yeah. you are sir, you are. Oh, um, uh, yeah, just, uh, I'm just calling in because I was just watching uh, Ibrahim and his mom, uh, them talking about uh, their writing experience, and um, I, I found it really interesting, um, you know, um, how when you're writing about something, um, you know, you ought to write about you know, uh, something that you know or have some sort of experience because I think that makes the writing experience more authentic and I think it makes it a much more of a richer experience. Um, so um, I thought that was, um, that was really, really um, uh, a good point. Um, and I think, um, I think nowadays, I don't know, I get, the, I get the feeling that a lot of people tend to write about what's trending um, rather than... Uh, what they should be naturally gravitating towards, like in terms of their feeling, you know, and, and um, especially uh, Abraham's mom, what she wrote about, um, you know, I found that really inspiring that she wrote about um, articles uh, and about topics um, that are relevant but are not highlighted as much. Um, and um, I think to bring it to the forefront um, so people can become aware of it um, and, you know, uh, did, and then other people learn about things that they don't know. I thought that was, um, I thought that was really, really interesting. Yeah, uh, Shuhel, have, have, um, have, have you read this book she wrote? I have not read that book, no. Yeah, you I, know why? I, you're I, a movie I, maker. I, I, you I can make a movie from <laughs> this, man. Uh, uh, I will read. Um, I'm now, now I'm interested you know, uh, after watching the show now. I'm, I'm right. definitely looking to that. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to sort of um, end by saying that uh, I do find Ibrahim and his mom uh, really inspiring. Um, I, I write, but I don't really write articles. I write more, as Ibrahim knows, I write screenplays uh, based on short films and stuff. But um, having uh, read some of Ibrahim's article um, and having met him in person, um, you know, you sort of, you know, um, you know, you sort of get inspired, uh, sort of, uh, by your uh, experience that you have yeah. when you meet someone. Yeah, uh, I'd like to okay, add something. Know. Um, uh, sure, don't go yes. yet. Um, yeah, I just want to say, uh, you said you do script writing and screenwriting. That's an that's art right. in itself because it takes a mm. skill to do that. It's not the same as writing a book. I know that because I've tried it and it really is difficult. Um, but yeah. I think, you know, well done for doing that because it really is um, uh, a difficult skill to, to build naturally. So, you know, carry on doing that and, and don't underestimate Thank it you. because it, 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 it really is a fantastic skill. If Thank I could you. just chip in as well, um, um, obviously, Salaam alaikum, Shohel, it's good to hear from you. Uh, thanks for calling in. Well, and uh, yeah, um, like I said, you know, I'm a big fan of the work that you're doing as well. You know, we're classified freaks. I think it's quite unique, um, particularly to see it from a British Bangladeshi like yourself as well. You know, and I'm really looking forward to watching the series once you launch it. So, um, you know, keep up the good work. Really looking forward to it. Thanks, man. And Thank um, I just want to say uh, to yourself and your mom, uh, keep, the, keep up the great work that you're doing. I think it's really important, especially within the Bangladeshi community, because um, I've been telling my friends and family about yourself and your mom and the work that you guys are doing. And, you know, people are genuinely interested when you do tell them about it, you know, especially from our own community. So, um, Thank you. Yeah, it's very kind of Thank you. Keep yeah. up what you're doing. Thank you, Shul. Bye. Thank you for your call. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Asalaamu Alaikum. Oh, mashallah. You see, it's, it's, it's about inspiring people. I know. You know so they I mean. can. It helps. Because it's having a role model where you can learn from somebody. I had to learn as I went along. Um, I had Rabina as a friend, but she, obviously, she writes different things, but it, it's just 
you know, we didn't learn right from the start. You just learn as you go along and, and you build up that experience. Can I ask you what are the difficulties you guys faced, especially, uh, Ibrahim, you're a young person. Uh, the barriers we have, uh, you know, going in that line or any line, what difficulty did you face? Did you find any difficulties at all? Yeah, no, I've faced quite a few difficulties, especially with, with doing the work in media, you know, not knowing anyone else, maybe in my immediate family or even close friends. Um, who have done this well. I don't really know anyone who's done this. So for me, it was about trying to find my own path and learn as I go along, a bit like how my mum's tried to pick up writing. Um, so yeah, you, you try to do networking, you try to go to other events and meet people who are like-minded like yourself, maybe even find others who have studied uh, the similar subject. So at least that way you've got that kind of common ground, really. You know, you can connect with them in that way. So, but you know, you can only do that through just you know, doing things and seeing what works and what doesn't, and um, you know, that's I'm sure sometimes when you write, people might put you down, like that person didn't like it, going against his ideas and rules and whatever. He so you will yeah, not find. Do. So what do you do yeah. then? How do you react? Well, I mean, you just, I think it comes with the territory. You just have to take it on the chin, you know. So there'll always be something, you know, there'll always be someone out there who doesn't like what you do. So I think the important thing is just to, I wouldn't say just ignore it, but you know, you, you see what's going on here and you see what you can do to try and make it better and, and you have to remember that obviously the more work you do you know that there are lots of people out there that do like what you're doing so it's important that you hold on to that and not sort of let one bit of criticism bring you down because that's what sometimes they look to try and do and, uh, and you know we've seen that with other people who are very successful writers as well you know there's always going to be critics out there who don't like what they're doing and uh, you know th sometimes that's what they get paid to do you know so, so what happens if you have a bad day in the office or if you have a bad day and you know like people are complaining oh what did you put this on for it's not a time to do it uh, let's talk about good stuff you know like how people are people are different man they don't want to face the uh, you know music all the time so how do you pick yourself up do you you feel moody or do you go home what happens how do you pick yourself up because there are a lot of young <laughs> people are watching if they're feeling you know same thing like let down or people you know, making a fun out of them because of the writing. What do they do? How do, they, how do you pick yourself up? I'll just put the kettle on when I get <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say, you have to be really thick-skinned to become a writer. And you're I'm going assuming to you get will hello, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you will get criticism, because even, yeah, when, will, even when my novel, it took me six years to get it published, and I sent it out to lots of publishers, and I did get some criticisms, and then you think, OK, based on that criticism, maybe I should change my book. But, but then you move on to the next um, publisher and then they say something else. So, you know, it, it comes with the whole um, territory, as Ibrahim was saying. If you're not thick-skinned, if you can't take criticism, then I'm afraid I have to be blunt and say this isn't for you because if you're going to get alarmed by just one criticism, then you just won't survive this. Do you, do you find difficulty, like you were a hijab, mashallah, you are uh, very practicing and you're proud Muslim yourself. So did you find it difficult publishing a book with the hijab? D did you find any comments? Um, no, no names, not, but... Yeah, not necessarily so. I think okay, uh, we'll the subject... Caller. Oh, yes, um, I wonder who it is this time. Hello, caller. Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Thanks, Salaam. Baya, Afnar. Can you hear me, Baya? Oh, mashallah. Mbala, si Baya. Yeah, go ahead. This is my sasa. Assalamu alaikum, Dada. Mbala, si Baya. Yes, why not? I think we need to write about our history. The, the, uh, Donaram is our body, we're okay. from uh, Fesigrain. Um, yes. I think um, and how we came yeah. here, and uh, you know, uh, uh, our present present um, um, situation and livelihood and everything. It, it's good that uh, my sasa said this because uh, we're actually talking with um, our, our Cambridge TV, who want to produce uh, a documentary about the uh, the Bangladeshis and how they arrived in Cambridge and how they they set up and their history really so they're, they're looking at uh, having some recorded history because our Bangladeshi we date back uh, to the 1950s so yes that's our, uh, well we'd like you to uh, uh, be part of that and help us uh, develop that so I think that'd be really good yeah and we've got a lot of uh, talented people in our families especially Ibrahim you know 
He's my lion. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah. He brought oh, me over the work nice. and uh, I'm proud to see you over there in the TV. And your mom especially. And I make oh, dua for you, you too. Oh, and, uh, you know, yeah. you should uh, write something about Donoram and uh, the young ones who are in Cambridge and all over the UK, you know, talented ones, you know, especially in, in my home. I'm having tea with my daughter-in-law, new, new daughter-in-law. <laughs> <She's laughs> yeah. Mashallah. Thank you for your call. Thank yeah, you, Sasa. Yeah, I've not program. Thank you, Baya. Yeah, I think I want to see you one day with Ibrahim here yourself. Yeah, inshallah, yeah. I'll be with Ibrahim and... Uh, Shaizun, and uh, I want to meet you. Inshallah, sir. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you for calling. Oh, mashallah. Yeah. That's good. See, mashallah. People are connecting. That's, that's, yes. the, that's the best yes. thing. Actually, I've not the khamgul of night. That's the beauty of it. That's right. That's right. And yeah. you are bringing in, um, you know, a smile to the people's face. That, that, that is very true, you know. Like, I, that's, this will tell me who, where I'm from, how I am, and everything else. And they're difficult times. I'm like, I'm not sure. is easy. And we're living yeah, in a high yeah. life. And we think, Thank oh, you. nothing's going to change. We yeah, never I know. Think, so we um, need to know who we are, man. Yeah, absolutely. I think when it comes to writing, I don't write for myself. I write to educate other people. And I want other people to be able to gain that knowledge of our history and um, enjoying it. it. It's just not uh, uh, about education all the time. It, it's it, People like reading. I think it's really important for children to read in this day and age because technology's taken over and every, I think all um, young teenagers have a mobile phone, they've got an iPad, they've got a laptop, they've got computers at home. Where have the books gone? We need to encourage our children to read more because through reading you learn. That's how to learn the art of writing. It, I read myself, I try and do as much reading as I can. I don't always get time to. but. Reading other people's style of writing gives you ideas, and that's how to develop your ideas. So that's what any writer will tell you, is to read so you can write. Ibrahim, um, we're going to go for a break in five minutes. So I want to ask you something. Um, as a young person, what was a difficult time, you know, going in that line you're going now? What was a difficult time? Is that like you're on your own in that journey to become a journalist? Or is that like not many people around supporting you? Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes I wonder, like, if we didn't have social media, you know, how would you get your work out there? So I feel that having this tool there, using digital media, that's helped me a lot. So I sometimes I wonder, you know, what if I wasn't there? You know, how would I get myself out there and, and make a name of myself for, for the work that I do? But, um, but, you know, I think the difficult thing was from the beginning where you had to try and build this and try to show people that, you know, I'm serious about what I'm trying to do here. You know, you didn't want somebody, someone to think that, oh, you know, you're, he's just doing this just, you know, just to try and show people, you know, you're doing this because this is something that you have a passion for. You know, you, you know we're not just on TV here because we just want to look good in front of the cameras. Yes. Um, you know, we're here because, you know, there is a purpose. You know, we have a passion for doing this. You know, it's a hobby for us. You know, just like when some people want to go and play football, they, they want to do something else for a career. This is what we want to do as well. So it's about showing that passion. I know, but your hard work, if you, now you see, can see the result, right? People are coming to you. People, BBC is coming for you. Ikra is going for you. Other places are going for you. But your hard work paid now, isn't it? How yeah, do you it was feel? about, um, you know, putting in how the effort. How do you feel? So it's, I think... Um, do you feel it's worth it? Yeah, no, I think it is. You know, whatever you do, there's, there's always going to be some challenges and, and there will also be some good moments as well. But, you know, I think that's it's all part of Allah's plan, really. You know, I, I try to look at it from a spiritual aspect about, you know, whatever you do, you know, there will be challenges, but that's Allah's test, really. It's about, you know, how do you overcome this test? And, you know, it's important in these moments to be patient because, you know, I think if, as long as you have the right approach to these things and you know, you put the right effort in and you have the right mindset and approach to it, then, you know, inshallah, you know, Allah will make it easy, so. And you know, like, um, I think that would be a proud moment, like, you could talk to your, um, when, you know, in 10, 50, well, in 30 years' time, your nana called and then, mashallah, called you lion in the TV, live TV. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, and dada, oh, your dada, sorry. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. see, he, he's proud of you. He shows, oh, I mean, if we didn't make the effort, we wouldn't have two uh, people from Cambridge going in that level. We didn't have it now. We're no to nobody else there. I mean, that is struggle. We need to move on and then people are will follow. People will follow. Because this is something we are changing people's life. It might not look to everybody else, but we are changing people's life. You're bringing out the voice to where nobody's, you know, using it. And we're becoming mm. there, the voice. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, actually, 
গোরো যারা মামুন যারা আসুন নাকি আপনি যে আমরা কিছু করতে পারতাম না সময় নাই রান্তে রান্তেও সময় নাই আসলে এটা আসলে রাইট না সময় আছে আসলে ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু ডু ব্যাট আপনি এখানে পারতেন না আমাদের যত ইস্যুগুলো আছে আপনার লোক দেজ ডোমেস্টিক ভায়োলেন্স দেজ দ্য ইস্যু উইথ দ্য কিড দেজ ইস্যু উইথ লটস অফ থিংস আমরা যদি এগুলো না হই ইফ উই ডোন্ট চেঞ্জ হুজ নট চেঞ্জ ইট ফর আস এখনো সময় রইল যে আমরা আনা মাইতিয়া নিরাই আপনার উনি করে ডু এনিথিং লেট পিপল ডু ওয়ার এভার উনি ইজ ইয়োর ভয়েস আপনার যেটা অসুবিধা হওয়ার এটা সময় আজ স্টার্ট হই বুঝেন উই লার্ন ফ্রম দিস কাইন্ড অফ স্টাফ আই এম শিওর বিফোর ইউ গো ফর ব্রেক এন্ড উইল টক অ্যাবাউট ইয়োর লটস অফ অ্যামেজিং স্টাফ ইউ অ্যাচিভড ইন ইন মিডিয়া and i'm sure the future is really really great and of course um inshallah after the break inshallah we'll talk about uh, other stuff the viewers um amra onek kichu bolte chhi ashole apnara ikan phone us and talk to us apnara their experience gulo share korte pone amader sathe obosshoi and i'll see you after the break inshallah don't go too far assalamu alaikum <laughs> Oh, 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 oh.